Good morning, students. So, how are we all? Hopefully, you are fine, doing well, and taking good care of yourself. So, here we are with the first chapter of your literature book, Honeysuckle. As you already are aware, the name of the chapter is Who Did Patrick's Homework? And like I told you, it's a very simple chapter. The words, the language is very simple, very easy to understand. So I'm sure you have already understood it. Going by the response you gave me in the class, I could understand that you have read the chapter and you have also understood it. But since we didn't do it in detail, so here I am reading the chapter for you. And maybe there are some words which you may not have been able to understand so today i'll tell you the meanings of those words and we will also discuss the chapter what is it about so it's about a boy a young boy maybe of your own age who is quite active he's he likes to play many games he's an active boy he likes to play hockey football and also video games but one thing about him is that he doesn't like to do his homework he shirks from his homework he shies away and he finds it boring he finds it very boring and because of that his grades are falling he gets poor grades in his exams he loves outdoor games but he's he's not interested in studies and because of his poor interest in studies he shirks from his work and is warned even by his teachers and one day he finds her he finds his cat playing with something very weird very unusual and when he sees it when he takes it in his hands he sees that it is not a rag doll or a doll but it's an elf a male fairy so it's the story of a boy who is not willing to do his homework. So let's read what happens to the boy and who, who, what does that elf do? Uh, what does that elf, what is his character in this story? So before you read, discuss in class, do you like homework? Yes, many of you like doing it, but going by the enthusiasm, you send me messages. Ma'am, when are we doing our question answers? When will you send our question answers? Even before doing this chapter in detail, you are bothered about the written work. So after we finish this chapter, we'll also do that written work. But I'm always telling you, don't rely on that written work. Whatever you do yourself, you are going to learn it. Try to understand the language. Written work, rote learning is not important in English. What is important? Understanding the language. And once you understand it, nothing can stop you from speaking, writing good English. So let's start it. Yes, many of you are interested, but some of you find homework boring also. So from... After this chapter, I'm sure none of you will find it boring and you'll learn a good lesson out of this chapter. So, name of the chapter is Who Did Patrick's Homework? So, let's find out who did it for him. Patrick never did his homework. Too boring, he said. So, he found his homework very boring. That's why he didn't touch his homework. He just left it undone. He would always leave it undone that's why he would get good scolding from his teachers they would always warn him that you are going to lose your grades so you better do something about it he played hockey and basketball see he was an actor boy he would play these games and nintendo instead instead of doing his homework he would pass his time he would waste his time playing hockey and basketball i'm not saying that playing is not good for you playing is of course good for you but then you have to set limits time limits for these you have to keep some time for your studies also his teachers told him patrick do your homework or you won't learn a thing this is what all teachers tell those children who do not do their homework on time and it's true 
Sometimes he did feel like an ignoramus. Ignoramus means someone who doesn't know anything. Even after the person is person is uh, has studied or he's educated, but then when he when the person behaves in a manner as if he doesn't know anything, that means ignoramus or ignorant. The person can be literate also, but then he behaves in such a manner that he becomes an ignorant person. He is not interested in learning something. Though he has studied, studied to some extent, he has studied, uh, maybe he's a qualified person, he's a degree holder, but then when he behaves in a manner that he as if he doesn't know anything, we can call that person ignoramus or ignorant or somewhat illiterate person. But what could he do? He hated homework. So this was his problem. He couldn't do anything about it. He hated his, his uh, homework. He hated doing homework, so he wouldn't touch it. Then one day, he found his cat playing with a little doll and he grabbed it away. So one day when he was just fooling around, wasting his time, loitering around, he found his cat playing with a doll and he got curious. He just wanted to know what it is that his cat is playing with. He grabbed it away, snatched, grabbed means snatched it away. And to his surprise, it wasn't a doll. So when he saw it closely, he didn't find it. A, he thought it was a doll, but it wasn't a doll at all. What was it? But a man of the tiniest size. It was a small man. Tiniest hair is the tiniest size. He had a little wool shirt with an old, with old fashioned breeches and a high tall Hat. So what did he find there? He found a tiny man. The cat was playing with a very tiny man and he was wearing a wool shirt, little wool shirt with old fashioned breeches. Breeches are short trousers and a high tall hat like you can see here, this pointed hat. He was wearing this wool shirt, breeches and a tall hat, much like a witch's like the witches were he yelled yelled is shouted so he yelled save me save me don't give me back to that cat so he yelled when he when he saw that the uh, there is somebody to help me so he shouted and told patrick to and asked patrick for help and pleaded him, requested him not to give him back to the cat. And if he won't give him back to the cat, he would grant him a wish. He bribed him. He tried to bribe him that I'll grant you a wish if you don't give me back to the cat. I promise you that. Patrick couldn't believe how lucky he was. Here was the answer to all of his problems and when that little man told him that he can grant him a wish Patrick felt very happy so at once he got the idea that here is the solution to all my problems so he said only if you do all my homework till the end of the semester yes Patrick became greedy so he told him Yes, I will not give you back to the cat. Only if you promise me that you would do all my homework till the end of the semester, till the end of the term. And that's 35 days. 35 days of his semesters were remaining. If you do a good enough job, I could even get A's. And if you do my job well, if you do my homework in a proper manner, I can even get A grades. The little man's face wrinkled. What is wrinkled? Wrinkled is to be crumpled. Like in Hindi we call it jhuriyan jaisi usko padgi. Like a dishcloth. Dishcloth is the is a sort of cloth or a sponge with which we wash the we with which we wash or 
uh, dry dishes so it becomes after use it becomes quite worn out and wrinkled so his face looked like that only thrown in the hamper hamper is that wash basket laundry in which after using that dishcloth we throw it for washing so that was it was like a it was it had become like haggard he kicked his legs and in protest he kicked his because he didn't uh, like what patrick told him to do though he was willing to grant him a wish but what Pat patrick suggested and what patrick asked he apparently didn't like that so he kicked his legs like you have seen a small child when he wants something wo let ke apni tange maar da na to isse bhi aise kick to upar se jump maar da gaya and doubled his fists and folded his fingers his hands in a way as if he had to punch somebody he didn't like it he showed him that he didn't like what patrick had asked him to do and he grimaced and he made very sad face and scowled and pursed his lips these are all the expressions we make when we do not like certain things we have discussed these words in the previous class oh am i am i cursed but i'll do it uff kya musibat hai lekin main karunga since you saved me from that cat and true to his word true to his word see this is a phrase true to his word this means as i had promised that little elf began to do patrick's homework so as he had promised patrick he began to do his homework except there was one glitch glitch is actually a defect or a fault something but here it means some problem so there was some problem he was ready to he began to do his homework but there was some problem the elf didn't always know what to do though he began to do his homework he was ready to do his homework but he didn't know what all he had to do and he always needed help and he needed help so he would shout help me help me he would say and patrick would have to help in whatever way and patrick would be there to help him he didn't know what to do because he would make such a, he would just create such chaos he would make such a mess he would shout in a manner that patrick had no other option but to help him so he would help him and what would that elf say i don't know this word the elf, when he began doing english so he would get stuck at some word he would tell patrick hey i don't know the meaning of this word the elf squeaked squeaked it he shouted in a shrill voice while reading patrick's homework get me a dictionary so he would ask him for a dictionary no what's even better look up the word and sound it out by each letter so he would first tell him to go and get a dictionary but soon after he would say no 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 don't get the dictionary but look up this word find the meaning of this word in the dictionary and spell it out by each letter to me like spell it out to me what it means and how it is spelled when it came to so that was for english and when it came to maths patrick was out of luck so patrick was even unlucky there out of luck is one more phrase you see it means one word out of luck means being unlucky what are times tables so he didn't know anything about tables the elf shrieked again he would make a mess he would create fuss he would just shout on top of his voice what are times table the elf shrieked we elves never need that we don't need table so i don't know what tables are so he would make a fuss and addition and subtraction what is addition and subtraction and division and fraction so he would know anything about mathematics here sit down beside me so he would ask patrick to sit near him and tell him what all he had to do in addition and subtraction what all this is you simply must guide me else no nothing of human history now when it came to science he didn't even know that to them it's a mystery 
So the little elf already a shouter. So when it came to science, so he was already shouting on top of his voice for maths, for English. So it happened. Same thing happened when it came to science or bio. Just got louder. He was already a shouter. He would shout on top of his voice. But when it came to science, he got even more louder. Go to the library. I need books. So he told him that go to the library and I need books to do this science work for you. I need books, more and more books. And Patrick couldn't, couldn't help himself. He just had to abide to that. He had to listen to him since he wanted him to complete his homework. And you can help me read them. Too. And he even told him, yes, first get the books and please read them so that I understand. And I don't understand. You make me understand everything, what all you have to do. So as a matter of fact, every day in every way, that little elf was a nag. So he was very bothersome. He's very, he was very annoying to Patrick. Patrick would have thought it was better for me to do it himself. But then he had no other option. He had no other he couldn't think of anything else but to help that elf. Patrick was working harder than ever. And was it a drag? Oh my God, it was such a tiring, weary job. He was staying up nights. He, was, he had to stay awake for nights. Had never felt so weary. Had never felt so tired. Was going to school with his eyes puffed and blurry so since he was he had to stay awake at night help the elf so he was he got he used to be very tired and when he would go to school with his eyes puffed swollen eyes because of lack of sleep and blurry blurry is blurred he couldn't even see clearly because of his eyes being puffed and because of because of not sleeping well at night Finally, the last day of school arrived and the elf was free to go. So finally, it was the last day and the homework was complete and it was time for elf to go. And what he did, he didn't even say bye to him. He just sneaked away. As for homework, there was no more. So all the homework was done. It was complete. So he quietly and slyly slipped out the back door. So without even saying bye to Patrick, without even meeting him before going, he just went stealthily out of the house. Patrick got his A's. His classmates were amazed. And what about his homework? Patrick had done all the homework and in such a good manner that he got his A's. He got A grades. And his classmates were surprised. How come Patrick has done such so well that he has got A grades? His teachers smiled. See, his teachers became happy and were full of praise and praised him no end. And his parents they wondered what had happened to Patrick. Even his parents were surprised. Oh my God, how come our son has become so sincere in his work? How come he has done so well? He was now the model kid. Everybody liked him. Everybody wanted to be like him. So he was their model kid. Every child wanted to emulate him because he had done his homework so well. He had got A grades. So every child was in awe of him. Cleaned his room, see, with his grades because everybody started praising him. So he got more and more inspired. He was no more that untidy child who wouldn't take care of his room, who wouldn't take care of his clothes he wouldn't he would do his homework on time he would clean his room himself he wouldn't wait his, for his mother to do it he did all his chores which he had to do which he could and he had to do which were his duty which was his duty was cheerful and always smiling because everybody was praising him so he was getting motivated to do more and more of that and never rude like he had developed a whole new attitude so he he had become a he had become an entirely new child a new patrick you see 
In the end, Patrick still thought he had made that tiny man do all his homework and he didn't realize that he had done all the hard work. The elf had made him do all the hard work. It was not the elf. It was Patrick himself who did his homework, but he couldn't realize that he was still under that spell of magic that an elf had come. He completed his work with the help of some magic, but it was not like that. But I'll share a secret just between you and me. This is the author telling us, Carol Moore, there is a secret. It wasn't Elf Patrick had done it himself. Yes, this is what this chapter tells us. There is no magic which can help you gain something. Whatever you achieve in life, whatever success you achieve in life, it is all because of your hard work. There is no shortcut. There is no magic. Nobody can help you achieve that. Nobody can help you get that. It is only your hard work which pays in the end. So this is what this chapter tells us. No magic can, no, nothing can do wonders. Only your hard work. It pays in the end. Whatever, if you are, if you want to gain something in life, you have to work hard for that. You have to put in your efforts. You must have realized, of course, when you study well, you go, you get good grades. And when you don't, your grades are just as low as anything. So this is very simple. No pain, no gain. If you want to do something in life, you have to work hard hard for it. You can't shirk away from your work. You cannot procrastinate. Let's do it tomorrow. No, of course you can do it tomorrow, but then you cannot always waste time. Sometime there will be a time when you will realize, no, I cannot put away my work always. I have to do it because nobody else is going to do it for me. So don't wait for any magic. Don't wait for anybody else to do it for it. Whatever you have to do, do it yourself and if you put it put your work away it can pile up to so much that you will be no more interested in doing it and that way you will lose interest always do your work on time and work hard for that this is what this chapter is telling us thank you children